Hi, I'm Parker Miley. I'm Tim Benjamin. And this is the Rage Podcast. Where today we're going to talk a little bit about a mix of Advent and winter, and, 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 and we're going to throw in testimonies and everything. We're all going to eventually get full circle with all those three things, okay? Yeah, so h hang on. We're going to get yeah, there. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fly, okay? Yeah. But I want to start out by reading from Psalms chap um, chapter 119. It's the longest chapter in the Bible, but I'm only going to read one verse out of it, okay? So chapter, it's from Psalms chapter 119, verse um, 111. Your testimonies are my heritage forever, and they are the joy of my heart. Tim, what was the um, theme of the Advent candle this week? Uh, we just lit uh, the pink candle, which is the candle of joy. The candle of joy. So, mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, that's a big part of Christmas too. Joy to the world. We sing all those mm -hmm. songs. Yeah. And uh, sometimes we lose that, but look, without the joy, it's not Christmas. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess... Everyone was, you know, talking about how, you know, it's going to be a bad winter this year. It's going to be so snowy and dark and gloomy and everything. So far, the weather's been proving that wrong. Yeah, not terrible. You know, but it can, you know, there can still be some stuff that pop up this season where it might be a little bit um, tiresome or... Yeah. Um, difficult. Difficult. Yeah. Difficult to get through. So, um, with that being said, um, I would like to talk a little bit about our testimonies. And to do that, I'm going to share... Um, kind of my testimony or what I cling to as what brought me to the faith and mm -hmm. how what got me here today. And, and before Parker launches into that, uh, this is a very important exercise for Christians to do. Because mm -hmm. uh, if you think about, I mean, over the weekend I was at two different birthday parties. Obviously talking about the beginning of, of a life, mm -hmm. you know, one, one of the little guys was one and the other one was seven. And it's just, it, it, we commemorate these things, we remember them. And I, you know, our walk with Christ should be no different. You know, the, let me tell you, those birthday parties were joyous to say the least yeah. uh, but but especially you got a bunch of little kids with a bunch of cake in them that was tough <laughs> but 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 we we recognize where, where this came from and and honestly our walk our walk with jesus should be very our, much the, our, same. the start of our walk or how we came into yeah. that walk you know yeah because you can't realize where you're at till you recognize where you came from mm -hmm. and uh, and the road that brought you there so that that's that's our topic today yeah so um yeah so and we're going to probably take some pauses and talk a little bit about my testimony, maybe you yep. know, Tim might want to pick it apart or something, but um, <laughs> I'll so, talk him out of it now. <laughs> so all right, yeah. yeah. So here I go. Um, at a young age, I you know I grew up as like a kid, as like a baby, you know, in the church. So I can remember vividly, you know, the old church that was right over here, and I remember going to the Sunday school in the basement and in the nursery and all those things, and having the communion and we pass it around in the bucket. I mean, in the little baskets like that. I remember that stuff. So, I mean, I knew of church, I knew it existed, but I did not, you know, I was a kid and nothing really clicked for me yet, you know, I was just kind of here going through the motions as a young child in church does, okay? Um, then I have two older sisters, okay? My two older sisters eventually, you know, one played volleyball, that was her thing, and the other one was soccer. And we traveled all over the place for travel soccer, volleyball, and all those things. So, eventually we kind of stopped coming to church for a long time. Until, so I'd say probably second grade is when I stopped coming to church. I probably didn't ever step foot back into this building until seventh grade. Okay? I so I had, a, I had a long time period of where I was not in the church. Now, here's what happened my, sixth through, my fifth through sixth grade years of school. I was blessed in my life to have all of my great grandparents. Mm. I, I mean, I was... I, all two of all pairs of them I, mm -hmm. I was there they taught me they were big um characters in my developmental ages of that time frame they were they are still mean so much to me mm -hmm. um sadly they you know they all were very old and um once one went all of them kind of went mm -hmm. along that's just i mean it was expected almost mm -hmm. so i the only time i've ever gotten any church service during that time or any any thought of the spiritual side of life was at a funeral and, um, and that's unfortunately very common. Yeah. yeah. And um, Tim always likes to talk about how I was, um, how I'm very um, hellfire and brimstone. And I, 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 I'll be honest, I am only because that's how I came to the church. That's mm -hmm. what, that's what brought me in, you know. Tim could have a very different story, you know, on mm -hmm. how that, but what brought me into the church is um, the fact that, oh, I'm going to die one day. Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen then? Mm -hmm. I had, you know. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll share a little bit more, okay? So I had a lot of funerals. Half of my family's Catholic, the other side's Lutheran, and um, a couple of them were just out there, okay? Okay. Okay. So um, 
I, I had this, I came to this discovery. I was like, why was this church so different than that church? Mm. And I was like, what really is going on here? And, you know, questions have started to pop into my mind because, again, I haven't been in a church. I haven't, like, understood the whole process of this. I, I was a kid the last time I was in this bu- in, in, in a building and learning anything like this. It was at those um, funerals is the first time I ever heard of, you know, the salvation story mm-hmm. and, you know, of how every tear will be wiped away from my eye one day. And it obviously sp- spoke a lot of interest into me. Mm-hmm. I was like, what is this that this person's really talking about? So when I was um, probably in sixth grade, I would go to a U- like a YouTube channel. It was called Chuck Knows Church. <laughs> I remember Chuck Knows okay? Church. Mm-hmm. And um, I, because uh, I thought... I would like to get back into at least going to, you know, a, a Sunday school. I'm, you know, my family and all, we've all kind of talked about like, we got to get back going to church. We got to start going back to church. You know, we said it for probably two years yeah. until we ever really made it back into door. Like, I remember um, we were like, well, we got to go on Christmas Eve at least. We didn't go on Christmas Eve. We, you know, I mean, and th- those things have all happened. Okay. Like, you mm-hmm. know, it, I'm, I'm sure many of you in this situation have been probably th- down this road mm-hmm. as, as a parent or maybe a kid in a, in a situation like this. But um, eventually, you know, we, we went to a church on a church service on Christmas Eve, and there was a lot of stuff. It was it was here, and there was a lot of stuff I did not understand. Now, how old were you at this point? I would have been probably sixth grade level. Okay. okay. I was like, why is you know it was Pastor Dylan at that time? I was like, why is he dressed in this white fancy robe? What is that mm-hmm. all about? Why do we do a fancy fancy little um the acolyte lighting the camp? I mean, you know, because if you're an unchurched kid, which I mean, I'll say I what technically was at that time, mm-hmm. I had no clue what was going on. I said, the music's cool. The guy who gets up there talks about some pretty, you know, cool things to learn about. Okay. Mm-hmm. I was, I mean, it just spoke a tons of questions into my mind. So every night before I would go to bed from sixth to seventh grade, I would watch an episode of Chuck Knows Church. Mm-hmm. I would learn what on earth is a narthex? What is, you know, yeah. what is these fancy scarfs that yep. the pastors mm-hmm. wear? Why? What is an acolyte? What does confirmation mean? What is baptism? I mean, he, and I loved it. I loved this YouTube channel because it would put out information like that that was what their sole purpose was it was you know chuck knows church and here's what we here's what you can know about church too Mm -hmm. he just taught us that stuff Mm -hmm. and um i would spend a lot of my i mean i spent a whole season of my life i'd say from six to probably uh, the summer of eighth grade just studying studying like religion things and and the faith in all these things and why why we do certain groups do this and everything. But again, in that time frame, I still never got the concept of what is salvation, what is Jesus, what is this story. I was I was focused on the smells and bells as some would call yep. it. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. And um and the fancy funeral stuff that goes mm-hmm. on because again I was converted pretty much by these funerals that took mm-hmm. place in my life. So I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what on earth is the church? What is all these the things that happens? And it took all this time, you know, for the longest time I was thinking, okay, the Catholic Church. I was like, I, I considered myself, I was like, I would think that's the true church of Jesus Christ. Because, you know, that's what they kind of lend with. You know, this is the church that Jesus started. And I was like, well, if that's the church Jesus started, well, I'm going to go over there. Mm-hmm. Then I finally got my first Bible, okay, around 8th grade. I got my first Bible. It was an ESV, English Standard Version. My dog chewed it up. And I, <laughs> I beat that dog so hard. I'll yeah, be honest. Yes. I mean, I was so mad. I took a shower in the morning. I came out, and there my Bible laid, tore to shreds. Was your dog named Lucifer? I'm just curious. No, it, it was Tucker. It was, oh, Tucker, it was Tucker. Was yeah. it okay? Yeah, Tim knows Tucker. But, knows Tucker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I and I started, you know, going into the scriptures, and I started doing Bible studies on YouTube channels, on looking up websites and everything. I mean, I had a lot, a list of questions I had to have mm-hmm. answered, and I soon came to realize, well, maybe that church isn't for me, or you know, I don't know how I feel about these Baptists or <laughs> mm-hmm. everything. So I then kind of rediscovered why I was ever in the Methodist church. And I figured out, like, this is the place. They have it what seems to be as close as I, like, I can interpret it. I really enjoy what's happening here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start going to this church. So I went to this, you know, I came to Wayne Street. My parents came along with me. Then eventually my sisters came back a little mm-hmm. bit and everything. And we got in. And I did not truly accept Christ probably until... My eighth grade year at Christmas Eve service. Mm, okay. I would say that is that was the pivotal moment because I finally understood 
well, the church, because I feel like I couldn't come to church until I knew what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. I like I had to know what a narthex was. How many of you know what a narthex is? If you know what a narthex is, please yeah, comment yeah, yeah. on Put our in YouTube the comments page. for the three of you who are going to know what yeah. that is. Yeah. yeah, if you know what that is, yeah, it, it's it's just you know I thought I had to know these things because I yeah. thought I was going to come to church and everyone was like, hey, meet me out at the narthex. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know where to go. Yeah, you know, you know, you know or all those things, and so you know, I felt. It's a little intimidating. I know what it feels like to come into a church and not know what's happening. Okay, mm -hmm. I get that. And so um, all these experiences add up to be kind of my testimony. And that mm -hmm. was a very short um, um, version of what all happened. You mm -hmm. know, I went from, it took the um, death of all of my great grandparents for me to ever understand the faith that um, I believe they had, mm -hmm. you know? Now, I, w I want to show you what Parker just did here for us. What he did was he said, I had a question then I had an experience, and then I went to investigate. Mm -hmm. And see, that, that, that's the process of, uh, of conversion, is that something happens that, that either you are unhappy with or you can't explain, one or the other, and you have an encounter uh, somewhere along the way, which appears to be a couple of funerals and a Christmas mm -hmm. Eve service, and uh, because you decided to say, all right, I'll take the next step, the Lord said, all right, so Parkers will take the next step, and uh, there's been a bunch of steps since then, I'm yeah. sure, but, but the idea is, is it was a journey. And uh, and I think that's I think that's what what people mess up when they talk about faith is they think faith is the destination. Mm -hmm. You know, faith is the journey. It's it's the start oh, yeah. of the journey. And you know, had Parker decided, hey, now that I know what a narthex is, yeah. I must be good. Yeah. Well, he'd have missed out on a lot. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah. narthex. Yeah, Christian. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, that's yeah. not how it was. And I, I mentioned, I was like, I did not come to the faith until you know, I learned a lot about the faith. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot about a lot of faiths actually mm -hmm. at that young age. I spent, I would get on my TV, on my smart TV, play these YouTube videos, look up these websites and everything, and I would just soak up this knowledge, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to make myself sound like some mm -hmm. high and mighty religious scholar, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm surely not. I have a YouTube degree. I have a YouTube degree right now, okay? <laughs> Which those aren't worth the paper they're printing yeah. on. Just those <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I know. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's that's all I had. But, you know, I, I, I as Tim mentioned, I had a question, I had a situation arise, and I had to find an answer. Yeah. And I feel like... Um, he mentioned how that was a whole the whole process of conversion. Again, mm -hmm. I had a lot of knowledge of the faith, but I certainly was not a Christian. Yeah, right, and, and, and don't and don't think that Parker has arrived. He hasn't. He, he mm -hmm. would be the first to tell you that. No, I, I would not. He's not arrived, but he's definitely on the journey now. And you know what? So am I. I've been doing this mm -hmm. for longer than Parker's been alive, and I, and I still think that uh, you know I'm not there yet. I'm still that, that all that was is was the beginning stages of what brought me into the faith. But it's, it's your current. Yeah. It's your current. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the beginning stage. It's the current journey. Because when you because when you look back, I, I think this is what's so interesting. Look mm -hmm. back. If you are a member of the faith, look back on your on your walk. Because I, I, that was my part of coming into the faith, and then Pastor Dylan left, and we gained Tim. And then when Tim and got he's, here... And he's still on the yeah. journey. I don't know how that and happened. And then when but, Tim yeah. got here, I um, I had a person who I could go to with all of these questions I could not answer. And, and he can ask... And he did. He, he did. I mean, I went to Tim <laughs> with questions... I, the, he, his biggest mistake was ever giving me his phone yeah, number. Yeah, whoever whoever gave you that phone yeah. number, I'm kind of mad at. Yeah, I um, yeah. I mean, I just ask him question after question after yeah. question after question, you know, because mm -hmm. that's what we have to do. I think that's mm -hmm. a part of the conversion. The faith is... Well, and, and that's part of Parker's journey. Uh, as as any of you who've watched a number of these uh, Rage podcasts will know, you know, he's the scholar of the group. You know, he's the one, he's the academic of the group. And, and so and you can tell when he's talking about his testimony, it's amazing how, how tailored it was to fit you, mm -hmm. which it should be. Yeah, you know, you know, uh, it, it's you know, we're not going to get to my testimony today, which is fine. But uh, you know, if I were ever to tell mine, I don't have a single book in my testimony. <laughs> you know, my mine uh, involves rescuing a bunch of Korean seminary students off a volcano. That's part of mine. True story. So, you know, everybody's got their own that uh, story that that tailors to them. And, and to hear Parker be able to speak so personally about a God that's thousands of years old. Mm -hmm. I mean that ought to just tell you something because this is this is a personal journey to him. And what a what a beautiful story, by the way. And and, and you know that that's the experience that's waiting for people if they're willing to initiate the faith journey. Mm -hmm. But sometimes that initiation is a little little uh, intimidating. And, and you heard Parker say it took him a couple years even to start, even as a kid when you want to do everything new. Yeah. You know. So uh, and and that's what I uh, that's what I, I hope you get out of this. I know Parker's got got an agenda here too, but I got an agenda. <laughs> What I hope that you get out of this is the fact that, that the faith journey is a wonderful journey. It's hard. A personal it's journey. It's personal, but, but, and it's uphill, and, and it's, and it's you know, got all kind of twists and turns, and you're going to slide back, and you're going to move forward, and you're going to get blessed, and you're going to get cursed, and you're going to be loved, and you're going to be hated, but it's a journey. 
that if you don't go on, you stay still. You never go anywhere. Parker could still be sitting out there wondering what a narthex is today. But because he decided in his own personal way that exploration and reading was going to be his thing, mm -hmm. that's what got him here. You know, and, and God tailored that journey just for him, just like he's willing to tailor that journey for any of you who haven't watched this podcast to be able to give you something meaningful now to lead you in a to a more meaningful place later. And uh, that, that journey is a beautiful thing. And the journey all starts somewhere. Yeah. Believe it or not, I, and I think Tim might be able to attest to this, the non-believers in this world, God has given plenty of... Um, starting points. Starting points. Yeah, you know, he's given them yeah. exit ramps. Yeah. And they've decided to... My exit them. ramp was realizing, oh my gosh, what is this whole thing of mm -hmm. death, life, afterlife, and all these mm -hmm. things. And boom, I got off, I, or, you know, verged this way. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of opportunities, there's plenty of things in your life, in, in everyone's lives, to where mm -hmm. that was an exit ramp. Yeah. yeah, that was a good way of putting it. Yeah, but 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 you pass the exit ramp, you stay mm -hmm. on on the on the highway to hell. Highway to hell, I guess sure. you'd say. You know, but easy. That's my line. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. You see, see, this is that's Parker's influence on me. I never would have said that before. But but the idea is is that that th those exit ramps are going to a place that honestly may be more difficult than the place that you are, mm -hmm. but the destination of that road's a lot better than the one that you're on. Literally. Oh yeah, not easy. Definitely. Yeah, everyone yeah. says that. Make right. Sure. Yeah. But 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 the journey is definitely worth it, and, and it gives you a life of, of meaning and purpose and, and direction. And, and you know, you get up in the morning and you're not just slaving away at some stupid job. You're actually serving a purpose in God's plan. That's the journey. And let me tell you something. That's better than the hopelessness and despair yeah. that people are trying to choke down today. And uh, if you don't get anything else out of this podcast, and certainly if you don't get anything else out of this Christmas season, understand that what God has invited you to is that that journey he just described in, in, in wonderful detail. The journey toward purpose, meaning, and eternal life, and grace, and peace, and all these things. All that's a part of the journey, but if you don't, if you keep passing those exit ramps, you're, you're going the wrong way. And just like me and Tim always do, we're going to circle right back here, to where here we comes. started, okay? Here it comes. And just like at, at, at Psalms 119, verse 111 says, mm -hmm. Your testimonies are my heritage forever, and they are the joy of my heart. So. That's how you podcast like a boss, yeah. by the way. Go ahead. So, I mean, it's the season of joy. And I think, um, you know, it's this is a special season for me because I mentioned, you know, I didn't, that Christmas Eve mm -hmm. service is when it happened. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it all kind of clicked there. Um, so, and all right, you want to talk full circle? Here, here, uh, here we go. What, two We're weeks. going another circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All these circles. <laughs> uh, uh, two weeks from now, Parker's going to actually help lead part of the Christmas Eve service. So he went from being somebody who had no idea to somebody who's now getting ready to... And that's how the journey goes. News to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're preaching at Christmas Eve. I'm taking the day off. My bad. Yeah, but, um, but, yeah, I, I think that... um. I don't want to say I'm special or anything, but yeah. how I can go from with... So, eighth grade, I came on staff here when I was a junior in high school. Mm -hmm. So, within three years, yep. three years... You went from a kid with a whole lot of questions to a kid with a whole lot of questions that we're now paying. Yeah. Or something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> I get paid to ask questions. Yeah. 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 Instead yeah. Of, instead of yeah. Having to I text can't him, promise it's always going to work that way. But instead yeah. of having to text him, I just go yeah, on, yeah. knock on the door. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Sure. But um, I, I guess... um. Dirt, I, you know, this season might be a little bit rough for some people. Mm -hmm. I think um, when we hit those seasons of despair and, and trying times, I always enjoy, look back on my testimony. Yes. Look where you came from because you definitely aren't where you were. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or where you could be if that or, testimony oh, yeah, didn't or, exist. Yeah, there you go. There's the other one. Yeah, That's or where you could be if you hadn't went that way. How, um, how you could be taken, where, where your life would be if you, had extra, if you didn't hop on that extra yeah. ramp. Yeah, so. you'd be further down the wrong road. So, Well, thanks for sharing that, Parker. Oh, yeah. It's always... Uh, you know, it's always a risk to put stuff out there, but that, that's great. And, and, and look, I know everybody's got a story, and we want your story to be a good one. So, uh, you know, understand that the life of faith, not easy, but absolutely, positively, unquestionably worth it. Worth it. So, yeah. All right, everybody, you have a great week, and uh, we'll be back next week with, um, I don't know, something incredibly Maybe insightful. Maybe Tim's testimony. Who knows? Yeah. Something. <laughs> yeah, if you want to hear about a volcano... Uh, I mean, yeah, he we'll left us all on a cliffhanger. That's right. Literally. It's called baiting the hook. So, <laughs> all right, guys. Have a great week.